Hey guys, it's Matt Hootsley here with Sawhorse. We are the 1920s Makeover ATL. And the last videos or set of videos that we created was talking about the zip system. Now, one of the things we talked about is like different control layers. So with the zip system, we've got our water resistant barrier. We also have our air control layer. So those are the two control layers. Now the next control layer that we have is the thermal control layer. So we've got eight inches of Rockwell insulation. Now this Rockwell is R4 per inch. So four times eight is 32, R32, just between the zip system and the edge of the rock wool. Now, once you add the zip system and some of the things on the inside, you're gonna add a couple R value, but for the most part, the effective R value of this is R32. The reason I said effective R value, when you're dealing with this type of construction versus normal construction, where you're doing stick framing, you're packing the insulation in between the studs, the stud is about R1 per inch. The insulation could be R16 for, or actually it's gonna be uh, R14 because it's three and a half inches in, in that stud bay. So every 16 inch on center, you're gonna have R4 versus R14 in that particular area. So what we've done with this insulation, we're wrapping the whole house. If you're wondering what this jail cell is right here, this is where a window is gonna go in place. So once the window goes in, we're gonna pack it with insulation around it and trim it out. So this is called continuous insulation this is part of the perfect wall system so the perfect wall has all the control layers on the outside of the house you've got your water control layer you've got your air control layer which is all within the zip system you have your thermal control layer which is the rock wool and the last but not least on top we've got these furring strips right here these furring strips are in place and they're ser serving a dual function they're not only holding up the rock wool insulation because we have these screws going all the way through these pilot holes that we drilled into the studs it holds the rock wool insulation up but the furring strips also allows us to add the cladding in this case we're adding fiber cement we're also adding azec trim on the outside so anywhere we're going to have to put a nail through because the nail is not going to go through all eight inches of the insulation we have these furring strips now on the corners here you can you can imagine that if we tried to put a furring strip right here and this is going through the corner the, the challenge is from here to here, this is eight inches of insulation. On this side, we don't have any solid mass to go into. So what we're gonna do on the corners is we're actually gonna build out, have like a wider corner board. And what that's gonna do for us as well, is going to kind of pull this tight. It's gonna pull it together. That way we don't have any gaps in the insulation. Now we did do an insulation inspection. We found a few gaps. So what we're gonna have to do is either pack that full of more insulation because we want a continuous amount of insulation, no air gaps continuous rock wool insulation all the way around. Otherwise, the effect of R value is not there. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is how we install this particular rock wool. Now I'm doing a layout right here. And what we have is you want all of the horizontal and the vertical seams to offset a little bit. And the reason is, is as water comes down, if it happens to make it through the cladding, which is your first primary defense of the house to keep all the bulk water off the house. If it makes it happens to make it through that and hits any of this insulation, if you overlap the gaps, that kind of acts as a self flashing. You don't have to worry about water getting through that to the other control layers. And also it keeps the, the building dry. The other good thing about using rock wool insulation, um, we're very close proximity to some of the other houses around here. Uh, it acts as a very good sound control layer. That way you don't have to worry about sound if someone else is having a party or if you know, Piedmont Park is next door and if they're having a concert, you don't have to worry about all the different noise. It also, Rockwell is very good for uh, fire resistance. It doesn't burn. And this is made out of uh, basalt, which comes from volcanoes and steel slag. Both things that can, has a very, very high flash point for burning and it doesn't melt. So we've got demonstrations where we've taken an actual torch to it and you can take a torch to this it's going to basically just going to laugh at the heat it's not going to go through the heat it's not going to go through the insulation it's not going to burn so if the neighbor's house catches fire we don't have to worry about this house because it basically has a fire blanket all the way around it has a thermal blanket all around all the way around it has a sound blanket all the way around it so you can see that just with this one product we've got lots of benefits just from this one product so we only have the furring strips above grade 
where we are going to attach the siding and also the cornice and, and all that. Everything below grade is going to be stucco. Rockwell does have an application where you can apply stucco directly to it. We're probably going to use something. We're going to have some other control layers that gives a little bit of air gap there. That way things can dry out before it gets to the rock wool. And also it holds the stucco in place. Now this is how we're doing the wall assembly. Here's a quick diagram of what the roof is going to look like. We're going to have outriggers and we're going to have, instead of the two uh, layers of the four inch rock wool insulation, we're going to have two layers of five inch. So we're going to rip down some two by sixes. That way we have five inches. We're going to create these little out structural outriggers. That way we can create a little bit of an overhang effect on this, get a little bit of uh, protection from the sun. So we don't have all the solar glare into the house. And you got two inches, uh, two layers of the five inch insulation. So R40 with that, and we're going to stick uh, Rockwell bat insulation on the underside. All these control layers, the, the air tightness, keeping the water out, and all this insulation plus the R factor and the U factor of the windows is what, we're a what we have to do to make this a passive house. Now, one of the other questions that I've got with this is like, what are you using to attach it? This is a screw that basically has the threads just on this side. So this is a 12 inch screw. You've got basically this part right here, there's no uh, threads on the first eight inches. This is going to attach, it's gonna go through the plywood into the stud. Now you wanna make sure that you're finding the studs with this. If you're just going through the plywood, it's gonna fall out, that's not enough leverage. But this is very strong. If you were installing these every 12 inches, the furring strips are gonna be strong enough to be able to help the, the cladding, the siding, whatever you put onto the structure. So that's, this is the secret sauce right here. Now, this one right here is a galvanized screw. You can also use stainless steel. Unfortunately, I had a really hard time sourcing screws that were 14 inches or 12 inches long. Now we're still able to use a galvanized screw with the modeling that we presented to Fias and make sure that we are going to pass the overall energy analysis that we're doing. Thanks again for joining us on this journey as we continue to explore better building products and practices to help you have a more durable, healthy, safe, comfortable, and energy efficient home. For your convenience, we've uploaded other videos just like this. If you enjoyed this video, we appreciate it if you hit the like button and also hit subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any other questions about this topic.